might be able to use this um, in some other uh, avenues, but I actually don't see. Okay. Okay. All right. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so this session is, um, and what I'm going to stop and introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Julie Elliott. I'm the Associate Director for Internships at the Career Education Office. Um, certainly a lot of faces that I recognize, and I'm excited you're joining us today. Um, as I mentioned before, I know we've had people um, join us. Uh, if you have questions, comments, concerns, jokes, anything like that, um, please feel free to jump in there. You can unmute yourself and just ask a question. Um, I have my screen set up so I can see my PowerPoint. So I might not see if hands are raised, but you're welcome to use the chat feature. Um, you're welcome to unmute yourself and just jump in there with a question. I'm, that's totally fine. Um, so today we're going to talk about, this is our 2020 vision series. Um, and today we're going to talk about tapping into your community of support. Uh, which is another way for saying networking, um, but we are trying to not use that that word a lot because um, I think it intimidates some people. It feels um, too much. Um, so we're going to just talk a little bit today about how we can break that down and um, how you can use it with your job search. Um, so like I said, we're just going to talk about what um, networking is and how you can go about doing it. Um, so networking is not asking for a job. It is not trying to um, use people um, for your gain. Um, it's not about putting people on the spot. The example that I always give is, say if someone were to reach out to you and say, oh, hey, Hannah, I see that you're, um, you know, you're a Goucher grad now. Um, you know, can you help me get into Goucher? Um, sometimes the question, the answer to that question is, well, no, I can't. I don't have a magic wand. I can't get anyone into Goucher. But if the question was, hey, Basha, I see that you graduated from Goucher. Seems like a really cool place. Can I hear your story? Can I hear about your experience? Um, that's usually easier for people to say yes to. Um, so it's not about putting people on their spot or immediately asking for a job. And we're going to talk about how you can use it as part of your job search, but it's not reaching out to someone to say, hey, I need a job. Can you help me get one? Okay. So what networking really is, is building, building relationships. It's, I want people to think of them as informal conversations. Um, we call them informational interviews. Um, I think that everyone can network. I think sometimes people will say, oh gosh, Julie, I, you know, I'm kind of introverted. I don't know about um, you know, reaching out to people I don't know. Um, to me, networking is more about listening and asking questions than it is talking. So I feel very strongly that anyone can be a great networker. Um, and I think sometimes folks that have a preference toward introversion can even be better networkers because they're intentional, they're thoughtful, um, they're good about asking those questions. But I think everyone can do it. So I want to reframe the conversation um, and again not make it networking but let's talk about tapping into a community of support and how can you have some of those in informal conversations to build relationships um, so to get started doing that you want to make a list think about people you already know like who do you know that's working at different um, you know different employers or that are in different fields um, are there people that um, you have heard or you know that might be hiring or think about your um, the people on this call today. Think about um, the network that you know the group of support that you have right here. Um, one of the things in the um, in the daily email we sent today. One of my favorite articles is actually in the bonus section and it's about using weak ties. Um, and one of the comments are, is, yeah, if you tap into people that you know, um, that you might be hearing or looking at the same things, particularly if your career interests are different. But sometimes it's just challenging yourself to go a little bit broader. And it could be that, um, you know, someone on this call might not be doing exactly the thing that you want to do, but they might know someone who's doing that. So I encourage you to think about people in your circle and then how can you move beyond. Um, I also think that networking conversations can happen in so many different places. So there's a lot of easy things to think about, right? Your family, your friends, alums, colleagues, classmates, like all of that. But then think a little bit further. Maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe it's your hairdresser. One of my favorite stories is when I used to work at a school in New Orleans, um, a student of mine went to, to get his hair cut and got talking to the, the, the stylist. Um, my student got an interview through his hairstylist. <laughs> You know, because you never know who might know. It's like dominoes, right? That idea of um, who knows people who you can talk to. Um, and we'll talk about LinkedIn in a little bit because that's a great way to kind of take it that next step. So um, I encourage you, I don't know if I want to take a full minute because I know I'm going to be talking fast today, but let's just take 
20 seconds, you know, can you write down a couple of people that you know that you can connect with who are in your network? So just write down maybe some faculty that you are aware of that are in your field of interest. Maybe it's a teammate, maybe it's a cousin or an uncle. Just write down a couple of names. Think about people who you might be able to, um, that you would consider to be your community of support. All right, so I'm going to keep going. Um, so you've already identified a couple of people, right, to think through. Um, and really to tap into the alum community is a great way to build that, that community. Um, we have, uh, now one of the other things that was in, in the um, 2020 vision email that came out today is one of the action items, the do it comment was to actually reach out to someone. And in that message, there is a link to a list of Goucher alums who have already said yes that they want to be contacts. We worked with the alumni relations office early in this pandemic um, and have alums who have already said they want to be a contact to, to students. So um, that link is in the email that went out today. I can also, if I have time, I'm going to show you where it is on our website. Um, but LinkedIn is a feature that, you know, that you can find all sorts, not just Goucher alums, right? It's, it's that idea of dominoes and who else might you know. Um, but there's, a, there's great ways to get um, connected to people on, on, on Goucher, uh, excuse me, on LinkedIn. Um, so the, there's the alumni feature, and I hope we'll have some time today to, to get, dig into that a little bit. Like I said, I can do a full, on, a full hour uh, presentation about LinkedIn, but there's the alumni search. If you look for Goucher College as the school, um, the advanced people search. I don't know if anyone has gotten in there, but you can search by school, you can search by company, by location. There's so many different filters that you can use on that search. Um, I also encourage students to join groups. Um, so certainly there's the Goucher Career Community Group that everyone is welcome to join, but think about groups that are in your, um, you know, your uh, career of interest or your industry of interest. Um, there's tons of groups out there. Um, I am in, I don't even know how many related to career services and, you know, career centers on LinkedIn and there's so many different groups. So I, if you haven't already, I certainly encourage you to search for, for different groups. Um, like I said, I'm watching my time very carefully. I'm hopeful that we can um, get to talk a little bit about the LinkedIn profile as well as um, maybe even to spend a couple of minutes actually searching. Um, oh, I got ahead of myself. So here's actually the, um, the page, again, that, that I said we worked with the Alumni Relations Office to find um, alums that want to help um, our graduating seniors. And then this is the list. So here's the link right here. It's just through our Career Communities tab. Um, and on the right hand navigation, it'll say virtual networking. Um, so if you, this is just a screenshot, but if you click through any of these, um, there will be a list of people that have said yes with their email addresses. Sometimes you will see the alumni at gauchercollege.edu. Um, the alum themselves didn't want their personal or you know a, a specific email address on um, on the web. But um, if you reach out to the alumni and let them know who you want to get in contact with, then they'll make that connection for you. Um, so again, these are based on the career community, our career community initiative. That are these broad industry groups. Um, but you'll see when you look at the listing that they're also by um, geographic location, what they're in, and most of the industries, they have a couple of different things. So again, this is a great way um, to get started because these folks have already said yes. Um, I reached out to some of the people that were on that list um, and just said, hey, would you share a story, a story or two about how you networked or why you think it's valuable? Um, so I'm happy to share the PowerPoint with all of you afterwards. Um, I don't want to take time to read it, but um, you can see from, from this one in particular is that sometimes it just took a while to get, you know, find that thing that was really interested and, and really think keeping that goal in mind. Um, and that's something I think is going to be really important is to really identify what it is you want from that person um, so that the, the request they ask can be genuine. Um, and get them to say yes to that. So again, I, I'm not gonna take time to read these, but I can share the, this PowerPoint. Um, so once you've identified this list, right, whether it's you brainstorm, you've come up with um, a list of people in your community, you've done some looking on LinkedIn, you've sent some messages um, to connect, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, now you wanna make a plan. I, I think 
networking is like buying a car. Um, very few of us can go to the car dealership, smack down a credit card and walk away with a fully paid car, right? Um, and I think of networking or tapping into your community of support very similarly. Um, you, it's like making those little deposits all the time. What I also think is really crucial is that it's genuine. Um, you know, I've had students over the years ask me like, well, Julie, why do I have to reach out to these people? Cause they know I just want help finding a job. Um, and I always say yes, but, <laughs> right. Um, but I want you to be intentional. I want you to be genuine. I want you to figure out what is it that you want from this person? What is the objective? Right. Um, and what's going to be easy for them to say yes to, you know, people have reached out to me and said, Hey, Julie, I love a job and career services in Baltimore. What do you know? Um, and I, I'd have to go work, you know, I'd have to go think, oh, wait, I think Towson has a position. I think, um, you know, but if someone were to reach out to me and just say, I'm thinking about making a career shift and want to get into career services, can I just hear your story? Can I hear, um, you know, what, what advice you might have for someone getting into the field, things like that. Um, so I think, um, you know, once you have this list is prioritize, right? It might be easy to reach out to some of the alums from that last slide. Um, that have already said yes, like, you know, they want to reach out, you know, they want to talk with you. Maybe you start with a family member, because again, that might be an easier conversation to have. Um, but I would encourage you to also think about who's working at organizations that you're interested in applying to, um, or who's working, you know, who's doing the type of work that you're really interested in pursuing. Um, so think about all those things, what you're comfortable with, what um, your objectives are, and then, and then who these people are. Um, I think it's important with networking is to be, to have this, have a structure. Um, you know, the suggestion that I make in, in this last point is to actually do a little bit all the time. Um, I think the ideal situation is that you are um, connecting with your community on a regular basis, not just when you need something. Um, I can certainly appreciate that you have all just finished your Goucher experience and congratulations again on that. Um, so I know it's more and more of an immediate need now. Um, but I want you to think also think long term, right? Once you get secured in a place, once you find a job, like how can you reach back and help somebody else? Or how can you keep in touch, continue to keep in touch with the people that you reached out to at this time? Um, I don't think it has to take a lot of time. Um, Maybe you set your, I'm all about people that know me, I'm all about small action items. So what are small goals, things you can break down a big task into smaller pieces. Um, so I have found, particularly since we've been working at home, I feel like I have a little bit more time. So I spend 10 minutes every morning on LinkedIn, right? Just 10 minutes. I kind of see what's been posted. I see if people are um, celebrating work anniversaries, if they've gotten new jobs. Um, you know, and I just, I like posts. I, you know, comment on people's posts. Um, so that's just a small thing. I've also been trying, even me personally, is to reach out to a contact, one contact a week, right? Just to reach out to say, um, how are you doing? I hope you're going, you know, things are going well in this crazy, crazy time we are in. Um, but that idea of being organized and having a plan, I think is really important. Um, because say you reach out to someone and they say, hey, send me your resume or let me know after, you know, I, that they recommend that you reach out to somebody else. Well, you want to follow up with the first person to say, oh, thank you so much, Sarah, for giving me Beth's, you know, uh, contact information. I reached out to her. It was really helpful. Um, so just to make that plan so they can kind of keep organized because I think it can pretty quickly feel too much or too big. So um, just that idea of, of being intentional and, and I don't want to say strategic, but um, maybe strategic, right? To think about what you can manage each week. Um, whoops, this has navigation in it. Um, so when you send the request, I don't know if anyone remembers Mad Libs. My kids loved them when they were little. I loved them. Um, so here's just an example of what some of, what a request could say. Um, and you'll see it's four simple statements, right? It's that first kind of introduction. Um, give them a little bit about who you are. Um, what I actually probably could add here is what the connection is. Um, I would add that to bullet one, right? If it's, you know, that they, you found them on LinkedIn, um, Professor um, Sterling suggested I reach out to you, you know, um, to have that connection. And then just two and three are just really quick descriptions about what you're interested in or what your experience is or what you're interested in learning more about. Um, and then that last item is like, would you have time to talk? Um, 
you want to make it clear that you're not asking them to do anything right now, right? You would just like a few minutes of their time. Um, you know, for none of us, not many of us have commute these days, right? So we have a little more time in our schedule. Um, you know, 20 minutes is not a big ask. Um, what I would also suggest is that you actually give them some specific time frames. Um, make it easy for them to say yes, right? So if you say, how about next Thursday, anytime after two or Monday from four to five or whatever it is, um, that way they're not having to look at their whole week and see what time they might have, but they can just respond to your immediate. Um, I know I've, I've had students over the years that say, oh, that just feels so, you know, so particular and it's so focused on me. I'm trying to be flexible, but I want you to rethink that. And that's easy for them to say yes, right? If you give them a chunk of time, they just need to look at that chunk of time and see if there's a, they're available. Okay, I feel like I am whipping through this, but um, so really when you have these conversations, what we call is it's an informational interview, right? Again, that idea of anybody can do this. Um, and to me, the objective is you want to learn about their path, their industry, their company. Um, and really you wanna come up with questions so you can get them talking, right? Um, so think about what would be helpful. I often encourage people to have some of these conversations even before you apply to a job. Um, say you're interested in working at CNN, um, you know, to find an alum um, who works there. And we actually have an alum who works there who is doing an Instagram Live tomorrow. And I'm going to have to get to my email too. I think it's three o'clock. Um, it will be in tomorrow's um, daily 2020 vision email. Um, but I can also find it before we get off the call. Um, but so the, hearing what their story is like, hearing what the, the industry is like. Um, and again, even if you do it before the interview, or excuse me, before you apply, when you go to write that cover letter, you actually have some information you can share to make that hook, which I'm sure Tracy talked about yesterday, to make that hook really engaging. Um, so again, you wanna be really mindful of their time. If you only ask for 20 minutes, you wanna be watching your clock, like I'm watching mine. Um, but think about some questions you can ask to get, them, to get them talking. And again, I think I've said it a handful of times, but I want you to be genuine and sincere in wanting to learn from them. Um, one of the things, one of the questions I wanna point out to you is that very last one um, is, do you know other people that I can speak with? That's kind of this domino effect, right? If you have, um, you reach out to Sarah and she recommends Beth, like my example earlier. Um, you know, that just, again, takes that domino and adds more people to it. It also, as I said, gives you a, a reason to get back in touch with Beth or Sarah, the first person, um, to, to just follow up, to say, oh, hey, I talked to this person. Because um, part of networking is that idea of sort of keeping the conversation going. And the conversation doesn't have to go every week forever, right? Maybe it's once a month, once a quarter, you know, at the holiday time. Um, but just as a way to continue the conversation. Okay. Um, I'm watching my time. So now let's, let's shift gear. Well, let me ask, stop real quick. Does anybody have questions? I know I like really just skimmed the surface of that. Does anybody have anything about reaching out to people about, um, uh, you know, how to conduct these informational interviews, anything like that before I switch gears? I'll try to look at the, I don't know if there's anything in the chat. Um, I have a question. Sure. So I've noticed that lately a lot of jobs, like how you apply is through these pretty like depersonalized just online application portals. Sure. Um, yeah. Kind of like fill in things. Um, and I've heard from a lot of people that it's like, that's kind of useless and that the only real way to get the job is through networking. But I'm wondering, like, is that true? And also, how is that possible when sometimes they just ask for your email and just a resume and then you submit it? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, uh, do I think it's true? Absolutely. Like, if you think of a job that's posted right now, let's just say on LinkedIn, um, they could get hundreds of applications, right? Um, but if they have a contact, a colleague, you know, someone that's willing to, that's able to say, hey, why don't you look at this one? Why don't you look at Eleanor's? Um, I'm not suggesting that that means you're automatically going to get the offer or that you're automatically even going to get an interview, but um, it's some other piece of information. Um, so I do think that it's a, an important part of the strategy, and I, I appreciate you asking the question. 
um, I've said to a couple of students, I don't, maybe even people on this call, but I've always thought that networking was really important, an important piece of the job search. But to be honest, I think it is that much more important now um, because there's just a lot of people looking for work. So anything that you can do to stand out um, is what you want, is what you want to do. Um, so the conversations, again, it's even if it's that I, that concept of, I'm just want to ask, I want to hear someone's story, but let's say that you talk to someone who works in, you know, with an organization, let's just say Hulu, I, Hulu, <laughs> right? Maybe they're in marketing and you want a job in sales, um, but it's someone who can give you some insight into the organization, can offer you tip, perhaps even tips and strategies about how to apply. Now, I'm not saying you're going to ask the person in marketing to go run your resume to HR, um, but even just hearing their own search process or the application process at Hulu can be really helpful for you. Um, so there is a statistic out there called the hit, you know, the, about the hidden job market. Um, and people actually, I've heard it quoted that about 70 to 80% of jobs are, are advertised, not even advertised. They're in this hidden job market where only about 20 or 30 are actually posted. And it could be that you reaching out to a contact, they might know of a position that hasn't even been posted yet, or they've just been talking about, and maybe that gives you a little bit of a leg up, um, you know, into the process. Um, so I know that networking stretches people, it um, challenges them. Um, I have two teenagers in my house, and every time I suggest, well, why don't you call the orthodontist and make your appointment? They're like, wait, what? <laughs> um, but I think, or I encourage you to think about what that's showing to an employer, right? The, the courage it might take, the initiative it takes to reach out to someone. And again, even if that person that you reach out to at Hulu doesn't do anything, right? But if you have that conversation before the, you actually apply, then you can say in that opening paragraph, I've talked to Alice alum who works at Hulu and I learned this right? Even in reading that letter, they have a sense of what, you know, the, the effort you're willing to take. Um, so the converse of that, right, is I think most people spend 80% of their time, you know, looking at job boards and applying for things and maybe only 20% of networking or tapping into your community. And I'd encourage you to, you know, to put a little more effort into the networking. Um, it, it, it takes time. I'm not saying it's easy, um, but I think, well, as I said before, I think it's always been an important part of the process, but I think even more so now. So that was an awfully long answer <laughs> to the question of, do I think it's important? You know, I think networking can really help you tap into um, uh, the, the, the market in a way um, that can be really helpful. Okay, looking at the time, I don't have much left. Um, that being said, I am happy to stay on the call longer. I just know that we marketed these as only 30 minutes, so I wanna be mindful of that. Um, how many people, and maybe I can open this up, how many people actually have a LinkedIn pro, I guess a lot of people have their videos off. Um, so I'm just gonna assume that a lot of you have a LinkedIn account. I just wanna point out, or if you don't, I'm gonna give you a couple of strategies. Um, I think, so I, I mentioned before, like me getting on LinkedIn 10 minutes every day, that's a way to start building an online presence, right? If I see an article that I really like and I post it, like people are starting to get a sense of who I am as a professional and what sort of things I respond to or react to. Um, I, but with your particular profile, which is what this handout is about, I want to point out three specific things. The first one is that profile picture. Um, I have been in the field a long time, and if someone had told me 15 years ago about putting a picture on, well, at that point, it would have been a resume, <laughs> but I would have said, no, you're crazy. No one does, you don't do that, and you still really don't do it on resumes. Um, but what the research is showing is that um, if you do not have a professional photo on your profile, it's not getting looked at. I mean, the statistics are astronomical of how a a, a professional profile, excuse me, a professional picture is just going to add to your, your, um, the accessibility of your profile. Um, so I want people to be thoughtful about it, right? Like think about sort of elbow or chest tie framed nicely. Um, you know, 
these days you can take a really good picture on a phone, but think about what you're wearing, you know, give a little thought to that. So that's the first thing. Again, research is showing that those profiles with professional photos are getting looked at more than um, profiles that have no picture. Um, two other things I want to draw your attention to are based on the way I did a webinar, gosh, probably been two or three weeks ago of um, people that used to work at LinkedIn that now have, they're called the LinkedIn guys, like they have their own um, like company about how to encourage people to use LinkedIn. Um, so what they said, having worked there is the algorithm in terms of how you show up on a Google search or how you show up in a link, LinkedIn search is based on two things, your headline and the summary. Okay. So those are the two that I want you to spend time on. Okay. The headline, if you do not put anything in the headline, it defaults to whatever your first job is. So I see a lot of student resumes that will say biology major at Goucher, Goucher student, like that sort of thing. Um, I want you to really think about how you want to market yourself. It's 120, I believe, 120 characters. So I want you to really think about what you're looking for. So it can be aspirational, right? If you just tell me you're a Goucher student and you've all graduated, I don't know what to do with that because that's, that's a one piece of information about you. So think of it as aspirational. What do you want to do? Okay. Um, and then think about what you offer. Like, how would you market yourself? So who are you? How do you help people? You know, how do you do what you do? What are the skills you have? So to really think creatively about what that headline says. Um, and I will also say, go look at other people's profiles and see what you're drawn to, right? Um, like, as you can see from this, like the second example, like those horizontal lines, like, I just like that. I think it's nice and clean. So I have that in my headline. Um, but really be intentional. Think about keywords that are related to your industry and the, what you want to do, your career path, what you want to do, um, and make sure that that's clear. Um, that the headline is also what shows up on a LinkedIn search, you know, the search results. So again, that's what someone is potentially making a decision about what's in that headline. Okay. The other thing that impacts the algorithm is that summary. Um, this is a, this is a narrative. I want to say, I think that has maybe 2000 characters. Um, so again, be really intentional about what is being said in what you say in the summary. Um, again, it can be aspirational, right? Don't, don't make it a, um, you know, it, um, you know, your resume in complete sentences, right? But think about what do you want someone to know about you? What is your, um, you know, what you're, you're interested in and pa I'm not, I don't love the word passion, but like, what are you passionate about or where do you want it? What are your interests? How do you do what you do? Um, like really think about those 200 characters and how you can start the, to share the narrative of your story and what you want to do. So again, it can be aspirational. Um, I also want you to really think about um, the first three lines. So as you're starting to craft your summary, um, go look at your public profile because you can only see, I think it's three, if not, if not two, um, that when you open someone's profile in, that, in the profile view, um, you can only see two or three lines. So again, just the same way the headline is impactful, you have to have those first couple of lines be impactful, okay? Um, so I know I am just about out of time, so if people have to go, or I guess it's already 2.30, um, please feel free to log off. I, we have a few more minutes on the call, um, I think before it kicks, kicks us off. So I'm also, um, I think I'm gonna stop there, so I will just open it up to questions if people have um, other things, I'm happy to, if people want a quick tour of LinkedIn, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, what would be most helpful at this point? My question is kind of different than okay. like LinkedIn related. So okay. sure. I don't necessarily want to take away. I've been seeing like more, um, and maybe like Tracy talked about this yesterday, but like including your salary requirements in cover letters, um, which uh, I know like you can kind of do some research on Glassdoor and yeah. and see. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that that seems kind of daunting. Uh, is and like for I've seen it more for like part time positions too. Uh, which I know. I feel like is newer, or maybe just 
from what I've been able to see. So that's kind of my question, but it's not as really. Yeah, yeah. So what I will say about that um, is be sure you're uh, answering what you're asked, right? So you mentioned salary requirements. Um, sometimes they will ask salary history. Um, so be, just be sure you're, you're an, answering what you're asked. I think, you, you know, you brought to your point of like going to do some research and trying to get a sense of what um, a range might be is important. Um, it's important to answer the question because if you don't, and then the employer's like, well, wait, she can't even answer this simple question. <laughs> you know, so you wanna answer the question, you want to give a range. So to try to get a sense of like, so it's Glassdoor. We have a whole section on our website about salary. Um, there's a couple of other resources, like salary.com is one. So, you know, there's other resources that you can try to get some salary information. Sometimes the challenge with the salary data is it's national. Um, or it's, um, you know, statewide. And so it really is important that you're getting a sense whether that's a national range or specific to your industry. Um, you know, I have to think salaries in Seattle are going to be higher than those in Walla Walla, Washington, right? So you just want to make sure that you're um, giving that range. And I think to frame it around having done some research, it's my understanding that a salary range for this type of position in this area would be X, you know, and, and give that range. Um, I also think it's important to um, state soon after that, that, um, you know, that for you, it's important to find a position that fits your, you know, your skill set and your aspirations. Um, just to add to that, like to not make it just about this dollar amount. Yeah, it's a, it's a crappy question. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll edit that part out of the video, but, um, or the recording. Yeah. You know, my, i come from a student lens. Of course, I'd rather an employer put into a job listing. The range is this to this, you know, my husband's on the hiring end and he's like, well, I want to know that someone knows what they're worth. And so we constantly have this, you know, little battle in our house, but, um, so answer the question as best you can based on research, um, and give a range. All right, other questions about networking, about LinkedIn? Okay, um, so maybe what I will do, and again, I, I think this is gonna cut us off in a few minutes because this is the, the free account. Um, so let's see how far we can get. So um, what I might do is I'm gonna show you LinkedIn um, just to give you, whoops, um, so here is my profile. Um, so again, here's my headline where I have, I just like those um, you know, so kind of uh, uh, vertical lines there. I just think it's kind of nice, but I've, you know, tried to put, present myself as who, who I am and, and my skill set. Um, so here it is. We can look to see, right, the, uh, the summary section is those three sentences. sentences. So again, to really... Um, be intentional with those and how you describe those, um, that it catches someone's attention. Then you can see there's a lot more space. Um, and I, to be honest, I probably created this 15, 10 years ago or something a long time ago. I probably should rework this a little bit. Um, so that's my profile. So again, here's a picture. Um, I have also seen the, um, that idea of having a little bit of a background here. Um, just to offer something different, right? To show the effort you've put into your profile. Um, I want to also show, so you can see I haven't done a great job of updating mine, um, but a lot of times people will say, oh, LinkedIn is like your resume. And so for a lot of reasons, I will say, yes, it is, it is probably like your resume. But what I love about it is this media section. Um, so I challenge you, I encourage you to, for every position you put on there, whether it's a volunteer or a class project or anything like that, do you have some media that you can share? Like I could share this PowerPoint presentation. There could be um, a web uh, post that you did or a blog post that you did, um, a flyer that you created, just anything that will actually take what's on your resume and add, add to it. Um, so I, I love that site. I love that about LinkedIn as well. Um, so here again, I just went to the home screen. These are my contacts. 
Um, I always sort by recent. And like I said, every morning, I actually even set a timer and I'm like 10 minutes go, you know, so to read um, Natasha's and if I like it, I could, I could post it. If I read an article, you know, I can share it and make a comment on my own. So it, again, it's that way, um, one, to keep in touch with your, um, with your contacts, with your community of support. Like Natasha and I used to work um, together when I was at Hopkins. So to be able to add something to her or to write a comment to say, hey, Natasha, this is a great piece. Thanks for sharing, right? It just is a way to easily, um, you know, keep those relationships and, and connections up. Um, so like I said, I give myself 10 minutes every day and just kind of see how far I can go. Um, so that's a way to sort of keep up to date. You can also follow um, organizations. You can follow people that you're not even connected to, um, the, you know, like influencers, if you will. But um, so let me also show you, I know we only have, um, so I'm going to just show you real quickly. If you go to Goucher College as the school, this is where you can find um, Goucher alum. So that's taken a minute to, okay. So right over, uh, that's employees, sorry. Right over here where it says alumni. Um, so we can see there's over 12,000 alums that are on, uh, Goucher alums that are on LinkedIn. And these are all the different ways you can filter. So if you have a geographic location in mind, a particular organization, um, if you have a industry focus, um, what's great about this search is if you wanted to see what the 1,248 Goucher psychology graduates are doing, you can look there. Um, it even goes one more, you know, looking at their skill set. So this can be a great way to find people um, to connect to. Uh, what I will say here is that it actually gives you this range. So sometimes I'll encourage students, you know, maybe even just to go out a couple of years. That way we are, you would just filter by alums. Because um, otherwise, if you don't put a date in there, it's giving you current students too. And not to suggest that, you know, your peers are not helpful, because I think they certainly are. Um, but if you wanted to find people a little bit further out, just put that in your there. Um, so that's the alumni search. Let me also, so I just went back to the search screen. So I just wanted to show you again, here's a way to search for people. There's jobs, of course. Um, the groups, that was one of the strategies I talked about. Um, there's almost 2 million groups in here. Um, and so there's going to be a, a lot for organization, you know, excuse me, th you know, related to your industry. So the National Association of Colleges and Employers is one that I belong to. You can see there's 33,000 members. Um, what is really great about being in a group with someone is that, so you can see from here, I, Lisa D'Amelio to me is a third year, a third tier contact, which means I don't know Lisa directly. That would be a first tier contact. And Lisa and I don't have anybody in common. <laughs> that would be a second tier contact. But because we are in this same group, I can actually send her a direct message. Okay, so that's actually a really great strategy, a really great reason to belong to um, groups because that can actually allow you to message somebody. Now, if I wanted to connect with Lisa and actually put her in part of my um, in my personal network, um, I would go here to the connect option. Um, and if anyone has gotten into LinkedIn and are starting to invite people, I really, really encourage you to add a note. Um, again, even just taking three or four minutes and writing a line or two can just go so far in terms of um, starting to build that relationship. Or if it's somebody you already know, um, and then idea of weak ties, like maybe it's someone you knew in high school or even in middle school, um, you know, by putting a note to say, oh, I, I, Kevin, I haven't talked to you in, you know, in several years. I hope you're doing well. would love to connect with you on here. Just a simple message I think can go, can go really far. Um, all right. So that's a couple of things. Let me just show you the people search real quick. So I, I went, I did that quickly, but I went, I clicked on the search bar, went to people. Um, and it filters by these right here. But if I go to all filters, then you can see. So um, you can search by school. So this is certainly where we could put Goucher. Um, what I love about this is it's looking for current and past companies. So let's use the Hulu example. Say if I was going to apply for Hulu and I search here and no one comes up, I can also look to see if anyone previously worked at Hulu. Um, and even if someone's there, not there now, they could still have advice, suggestions, no people still at the organization. Um, so I love the, I love the past company search too. 
Okay, I have just talked <laughs> an awful lot. Um, let me get back to um, seeing you. Does anyone have any other questions? Um, anything that you are want to know before we get off the call in terms of um, whether it's LinkedIn, how to send those connection requests, what do you do in those um, informational interviews, anything like that, or anything else on LinkedIn? Okay. Um, so what I, um, I get, I'm happy to stick around. I guess we didn't get, oh, you know what? This is the career um, Zoom account. So I think it is, we do have longer than just the 40 minutes. Um, so I'm happy to stick around if people want to ask any additional questions. Um, I will just, I will add that um, we are, the Career Education Office is committed to working with students, um, graduate, our graduates at, through the summer. Um, we unfortunately lost our alumni career counselor position over the, like through the ASR. Um, but we, the four of us, the four strong that are still here are um, committed to working with our students. So, um, you know, certainly reach out, you can schedule appointments. You know, we have a lot of information on our website. Um, would anybody be interested in doing some of these sessions periodically throughout the summer? Is that something I see? Oh, I see a couple head nods. Okay. Um, Cause we're certainly, you know, trying to think how we can continue to support students. Um, you know, we had, we had, I think at 1.13 people on the call today, which is fantastic. Um, so we're happy to keep doing these sessions. We're happy to keep emailing. So I would encourage you to um, continue. Look, we don't have personal email. So um, our team has talked about trying to keep doing our, the series or at least keep doing some email. So I encourage you to keep checking your gotcha email or, you know, do like the forwarding to your personal email or whatever. Um, so we're happy to keep supporting students. Um, so, all right, any other questions, whether related to LinkedIn or networking? Yeah, um, so yeah. does that mean, are you guys doing like individual meetings too? Like, could we meet individually? Yes. Okay, yep. okay cool, yeah. thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the summer always gets a little boring without students anyway, so even more so from home. <laughs> so, yeah, you're welcome to. Yeah. All right. If there's no other burning questions, um, then I think we can say goodbye for now. Um, I just want to, oh, let me, since I, um, let me stop sharing my screen real quick. I want to, it will be in tomorrow's email. Um, let me go grab it because Stephen just emailed me. Um, so tomorrow, Thursday, the 28th at 10 o'clock, um, reading partners will have a virtual in info session, um, where you can learn about their postgraduate year long AmeriCorps opportunities. Um, also tomorrow, the 28th at 3:30, we on Instagram live. So it's at the Goucher hub. Um, we have a virtual employer engagement. So Oliver Janney class of 2003 is the senior manager of field production department at CNN in Washington, DC. Um, so our very own Tashi McQueen, she's one of our student assistants is um, going to lead a discussion with him about uh, the career path, um, starting in broadcast media, and then they do have a temporary rotational program that he'll talk about. Um, and then on Friday, um, sorry, I'm trying to read this one quickly. Um, recruiter and recruiters and Goucher alumni from Baltimore Corps will share their postgraduate fellowships in Baltimore City. Um, sorry, I was sorry. I was trying to read his message. They actually don't have a link, so I have to admit, I'm sorry. I don't know what if that's going to be on Instagram Live or if that's another Zoom session. Um, but I'm sure we will post that in Friday's daily message. Um, so certainly be on the lookout for that if anyone's looking um, to stay in the Baltimore area. So, all right. Well, thanks so much for sticking with me. Yeah, I went way over my 30 minutes. <laughs> but um, I am, yeah, Liam's like, oh, whatever. Um, I, I am just a huge uh, proponent of LinkedIn and tapping into people. Um, into their stories, right? Uh, you don't have to go this alone. Uh, the, the alums that are on that page, um, the virtual networking page in Career Communities, they have already said yes, right? They want to support um, our current students. I think everyone in the world is aware of what uh, unfortunate but chal and challenging 
job market you're graduating into. So I think that you will find people are happy to talk, right? And it's not, again, asking them to do something. It's just asking them to share their story. You know, you could do that LinkedIn search for alums and find graduates from 2008, 2009, 2010. You know, they also graduated into a not so great um, um, market, job market, right? The last recession. So maybe they have some tips and strategies. Um, and I certainly, you know, I've said it a couple of times and I just want to acknowledge it again. I know that this idea challenges people, it taps people, it pushes them a little bit. Um, but I, I feel so strongly that you don't, you don't have to do it on your own, right? Even just hearing someone's story about how they got their job at X company or what was their first job out of college. Um, you know, any of those stories I think can all be just, can just be helpful. And I think particularly, you know, reaching out to, to, you know, and maybe I should have said this when more people were on the call, but, you know, even people that you reach out to, they themselves might be going through a challenging, you know, both personal or, or health situation as well as a, a job situation. But I think um, what I've seen just even in stuff on LinkedIn and, um, you know, I think this community, uh, the community, a, a broader community is just willing to help each other. Um, yeah, I, I just happened to be on LinkedIn after Uber announced that they were late. They laid off a ton of people um, in corporate um, and there were all these messages floating about from people that kept their jobs at Uber, which I think there's a bit of survivor guilt and, you know, there's different feelings about that too. But um, there were tons of messages about, hey, this, these are my great colleagues. Who, what do you know? And like people just wanting to help others. So um, I'll get off my soapbox, but I just think um, LinkedIn is, is a great tool um, that can support you. Um, and I also want to say the CEO too, right? Like we will be here for you at least through the summer. I think we will have to evaluate kind of what happens in the fall. Um, but we are here and want to support you in any way we can. All right. Uh, any last minute questions? Anything else I can? Oh, I so the reading partners is that a zoom thing or is that a um yep let instagram me instagram thing um it says register to attend and find the link on the facebook event page okay. so let me um yeah i i'm crafting the message for tomorrow tomorrow is about interviewing so i'm doing the zoom session tomorrow so it'll be and i'm i'm putting the message together so i'll get all the details um, straight in my head. I just got this email like a few minutes before we got on the call. So um, yeah, I'll figure out the details and get that in okay. the message tomorrow. Thank you, Julie. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. Well, hang in there. Know that we're thinking about you um, and let us know what we can do to help. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. my pleasure. All right. Good to see you all. I love seeing faces. Yeah. <laughs> That's my family. I mean, I love my family too, but <laughs> Good to see new faces. All right. Take good care. Bye. Bye.